Hello, welcome to Megger's technical support video series, Frequently Asked Questions. In this video, we will discuss how to perform an excitation current test using the Power Factor Test Form 93500. Let's get started. Here we have the Power Factor Two Winding Transformer Test Form 93500 with our header information up top, followed by our nameplate data, and then our test selection. And for the purpose of this video, we have selected the, excita uh, the excitation or exciting current test. Looking at the excitation current test, we can see initially the number of tests defaults uh, to five here. If we wish to add more tests, we can simply come in and type in, hit enter, and it will populate with more fields here. Um, looking over at the left-hand side, we can see columns for DETC and LTC. So these are to document which tap you're on when performing the test. So we can see that we don't have an onload tap changer in this example, but we have five taps on our de-energized tap changer where our nominal is tap three. So we'll go ahead and just put in tap three as if we're testing on our nominal. Moving over, we can see uh, the test voltage is already populated. We can It's populated because we've input the voltage for the transformer and the so we've already have all of the information as far as voltage and, and power rating. So it will automatically populate with the appropriate voltage uh, given that information. We can also see the inductance or capacitance measurements. So this will be in either Henry's or picofarads. And then the actual measurement of our excitation current, as well as the 10 kV equivalent. We're already testing at 10 kV because the primary side is rated over 10 kV. But in the event that you're not able to test at 10 kV, um, it does give the 10 kV equivalent. We can also see at the top, we have the option for a hookup diagram. In this case, we just have a Y, Y, zero. Um, and we can see for testing phase A, you have the sample connections where high voltage is applied to your H1 bushing and your measurement lead, seed in red, is attached to the HO bushing. And the other phases, connections are here as well for phase B and C. Looking also, um, we can change over to kind of a more common, so a DYN1. So we have our delta and our YN1. And we can see here, uh, we have at the top phase A, B and C, and next to those are enter connections. And what that is, is that allows, uh, just similar to the connections on your, your tap changer, this allows you to enter the connections made on the bushings themselves, where the push first uh, bushing entered would be where the high voltage is applied, and the second bushing entered would be the measured, uh, where the measured lead is applied, in this case, um, the red lead. And you can change the test mode as well. So we have it in the ungrounded specimen test with the red lead, we can change that to use both red and blue. We can use grounded specimen test and so on, as you can see here, the whole list. We'll go ahead and keep it on the USTR. And going back to the interconnections, we can see phase A here. So scrolling up, you always need to refer to the vector diagram to determine what the proper bushings are um, for testing phase. So looking here at phase A, we can see H1 to H3 corresponding to our x1 to xo for the given vector diagram. So we can type in h1, h3, and that documents that we are attaching the high voltage lead to the h1 bushing and measuring on the h3 bushing when testing the A phase. The next step would be to perform the test itself. And to do that, you can see a number of blue uh, buttons, if you will, on each of the rows on the left-hand side. If we click the the one here at 47, we can say we want to run the test on a, a phase. <clears throat> here we have our measurement overview where we have our test mode, the suppression method, our test frequency, and our test voltage. We can go ahead and continue with the measurement, and up pops our interlocks uh, and ground loop. So when performing a test with the Delta 4000, it's imperative um, that these three conditions be met to move forward with the testing. And that's that both interlocks must be depressed and the ground loop must be closed. Uh, so the LED on the side of the Delta 4000 should be off. 
for the purpose of this, we'll move forward in simulation mode. So the measurement is in progress, as we can see in the top left, and the measurement has taken place. It allows us to save the document, so we can overwrite that, and we can save that. So it's a one-time save, and now we can move forward with testing, and it'll just update that document as we move forward. Uh, so looking at our measurement, we can see we have our, our capacitance and picofarads. We have our excitation current, which is 25.4 milliamps, and our 10 kV equivalent, which is equivalent to the actual measurement we got since we were testing at 10 kV. Now that we've saved, we can move forward with another test as well. So if we were to test phase B, for instance, we can go back up to our vector diagram. B in this case would be H1, H2, corresponding to our XO, X2. So we can put an H1, H2. We already have our test voltage. So now we can click here again. And instead, we'll run on phase B. Same uh, test mode and, and same measurement overview we saw before. The same testing uh, conditions must be met, meaning both interlocks must be depressed and your ground loop must be closed. We can move forward in simulation mode. Our measurement is in progress and then the measurement is taking place. So it populates the field. And this is how to perform the excitation current with the Delta 4000 using the power factor to winding test form 93500. This concludes how to perform an excitation current test using the Power Factor test form 93500. Visit the MEGA YouTube channel for more videos including technical webinars, product overviews, and other how-to presentations similar to this one. Contact us for questions or more information about this topic or for any support you may need for your electrical testing.